Welcome to the lab. I'm Drew Collop. In today's lab, we're going to continue our analysis of different milk and milk products. Today's test will be Sudan Red 4. This is a test to assess the level of lipids or fats. Sudan Red is a hydrophobic stain. We will add drops, a single drop, of our milk or milk products onto Wattman filter paper. We will let it dry. Then we will incubate the filter paper with the dried milk and milk products in Sudan Red for about five minutes. Sudan Red is dissolved in 95% ethanol. Following incubation in the Sudan Red, we will wash the filter with 95% ethanol. Any of the stain that is not stuck to the lipids or fats on the filter paper will be washed away. I'm hoping we can quantify relatively the different amounts of fats in the different milk and milk products. Here's our Sudan Red stain. We will place it into the stain, make sure it's completely submerged. Take note, Sudan Red is a known carcinogenic reagent, so please wear gloves and wash your hands. For controls, I've used water, distilled water, as a negative control, and I've used olive oil as a positive control. The drop of distilled water will be in the top left-hand corner. Immediately to the right of that will be the drop of olive oil. There are 12 other drops added to this filter paper. For the purposes of this lab, I will not be telling you exactly which drop is which. I will give you an alphabetic list, but I would like you to review all the videos in the milk analysis series and attempt to determine which is which. Looking at the levels of lipids, looking at the different levels of protein, and the different levels of carbohydrates. I would like you to make very thorough observations. This is a key skill to have when working in the laboratory. If I told you exactly which one was which, I'm concerned it would influence your observations. I've sped up the video to 10 times speed, so you wouldn't need to watch it for the full five minutes. When it's done, we'll transfer it to a solution of 95% ethanol to wash away any of the Sudan red that isn't bound to the lipids in the milks. For which samples we're analyzing, I went to the local grocery store and picked up every milk and milk product they had. Everything from cream to skim milk to 2% milk to protein added 2% milk to cashew milk and oat milk. Everything I could find, I couldn't find rice milk at this particular store. As we begin to wash away the excess Sudan Red, you can see the droplets have been stained by the Sudan Red. And it looks like there is some variability. This is a good sign. Initially, the 95% ethanol was clear. And as we rinse our filter paper, you can see the 95% ethanol is turning that red color. Why? Well, because it's coming off of the filter paper. I'm moving this around to make sure that the 95% ethanol comes in contact with the entire filter paper and that we wash any of it away. Initially, the entire filter paper appeared red and now it's just the dots where I placed the samples. You might notice there are actually three negative controls. I had a bit of an aim issue as I was adding the water to the filter paper. I honestly didn't think it would show up in the final results. But it is interesting that you can see with just water, there is a bit of the stain that remains on the filter paper. And that is why we do negative controls to ensure we know what a negative result looks like. The filter appears to be getting pretty clean. Looks like there's quite a bit of particulate matter. I guess that's the Sudan red itself. We will now transfer the filter paper to dry. As I pull it out, I will attempt to dab off any excess ethanol that might still be on there. Remember, Sudan Red is a known carcinogenic reagent, so please dispose of this appropriately. Okay. 
Again, looks better than before, but let's let it dry and we'll see what it looks like. Here it is after drying for some time. I would like you now to compare the differences between the samples. Try and determine the relative amount of lipid based on how strongly the Sudan Red stained the sample. Make as many observations as you can. This will help you identify which specific milk or milk product you're dealing with, or maybe give you a general idea of whether or not it is a milk or milk product. In our next lab, we'll analyze the different levels of protein in these same 12 unknown samples. We will use Biuret to assist us in analyzing the levels of protein. I will add a link at the end of this video. If you've enjoyed this video, give it a like and consider subscribing. Until next time.